I want the kid, Laura. Leave me alone. I don't see the kid. She's got a bag with handles, and she's carrying it by the bottom. <laughs> Cute. Let's go. What do you think you're doing? We're just looking for somebody, Father. Well, I don't know who you're looking for, but there's nobody here. Now, look, this is a place of worship. And I'll thank you and your friend here to leave. Choose to return next time. Come unarmed. Maybe the police can help you find what you're looking for. Excuse us, Father. What's their hurry? I don't know. It's very peculiar. They're hunting for someone. I'd sure hate to be the one they're after. Sure look like serious people. How could anybody leave you? Hmm? Yeah, that's what I hope to find out just as soon as I... Ah, good. It's ringing finally. Chicago Children's Agency. 
Uh, yes, this is Father Dowling. It... Monday morning at 9 a.m. Please phone back then. Thank you. Well, I got some stuff in her bottle. Is the agency coming to pick her up? Not exactly. Here, I promised Sister Agnes I was going to fix her dinner tonight. If I'm going to get to the market and get the things that that's going to need and get back here at time, i got to get on my horse and go. I am here about the dinner in honor of the bishop. Oh, yes. I noticed that St. Michael's table was sadly undersubscribed, so I thought perhaps I could help. How's that? The thing is that as the bishop's private secretary, I'm expected to make a comic toast. Not too broad, nothing risque, good-natured, yet nothing inappropriate. You are famous for those little jokes in your sermons. So, I was, I was wondering... Would I write your toast? In which case, I would sell your table for you. It would be my pleasure. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I really should be going. Please give me a ring when you have a rough draft, and uh, we'll go over it together. I'll give you a ring. So what we'll need is something charming and somehow memorable. Endearing it, not too cloying. Something people will remember. Good night. I don't understand you, Frank. What kind of mother would just abandon her baby? Someone who's pretty desperate and who has access to a towel service. Huh? These, DeMarco Linen Service. I'm thinking we ought to check it out first thing in the morning. It's a good idea. And I'm also thinking you ought to go back to the convent. Oh, that's okay. You go to bed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay here in case she needs anything. Are you sure? Because I'd be happy well, to... No, just hit the light on your way out. Okay. Rest well. How many towels like this I run through here? 15,000 a day. It's a lot of detergent. But an operation like yours, you must keep excellent records. Maybe if you check the mark against. Ella. Hey, Tony. Ooh. Angela, forget about it. Not even if you gave her a shave. Nah, I gotta pass. Ciao. I can't help you out, Padre. One the clock here. Look, see my bookkeeper on the way. I say I said to give you 50 bucks. OK, make that 100 for your favorite charity. Just leave a receipt. Thanks. Uh, could we confide in you? Sure, why not? There's this mysterious young woman, very beautiful. When we found her at the church, the problem is she won't tell us who she is or where she came from. She won't talk? Cries a little. Well, maybe she's got amnesia. Well, the thing is, she had one of these towels. Now, if we could find out where it came from, then maybe we could figure out who she is. Now, Frank, I have this feeling, don't ask me why, that she's an heiress. Oh, I, I wouldn't rule that out. You, you know, I, I read something like this once. W where'd you guys say you were from? St. Michael's. We'll leave the number with your bookkeeper when we pick up your check. See ya.
any luck getting a hold of a city agency? Everything's closed till Monday. May have to keep her over the weekend. Well, we just can't give her to anybody. You working on Father Presswick's toast? Hmm. I'm trying. But it's not easy. Say, Michaels. What? Well, yeah, yeah, but hello? Hello? It was her, Frank. It was the mother. She wants us to bring her the baby. Are you sure it was the mother that called? She said she'd made a terrible mistake and we'd meet her here in the park. Are you gonna give the baby to her? If anything seems wrong, anything at all. Hi! Thank God, how is she? She's wonderful. Look, uh, before you take her, there's something we have to talk about. There she is! Like trouble? Quick, get out of here. What? Come on. Get her. Don't let them get her. Go! Hey, that's my kid! Steve, keep driving. I don't know, Frank. What do you mean you don't know? Something is very wrong here, something terrible. What we have here is a domestic disturbance. Husband and wife fight over custody. It's regrettable, but so far it's not a crime, at least not until somebody files a complaint. Can't you do something? Sure. We'll look for the parents. And in the meantime, I can put her in a city facility for abandoned children. Finally, I'm getting my kitchen back. A little order around here. <laughs> this is a very good first draft, very promising. You don't like it, eh? Oh, I didn't say that. But this is just sort of roughed in, isn't it? I mean, the final speech will be as we discussed. Amusing, but moving. Charming, but memorable. Exactly. Just leave it with me, huh? I, I think it's coming along beautifully. Good day, all. I'll see you soon. Take your time. By the way, are we running a dating service now? What? Well, some man told about some woman. Sounded like a parlor snake to me. A parlor snake? Your pal, 15,000 towels a day, DeMarco. It's got to be him. Did he leave a message? Like an address? Oh, now wait, I think he, uh... What did I write that down on? Oh, Marie, it's really important. Hmm. Of course. Huh. Yeah, I bet you. Here it is. See, I just got back from market and unwrapped the roast. Towels came from the fitness factory? Yeah, it's a high-tech health club over on Wabash. Place is so fancy they even have valet parking. Would somebody please tell me what this is all about? Well, do you remember the towels that were at the bottom of the bag that the baby came in? Well, this guy who called, he runs the service that provides them to the fitness factory. And I think we ought to get over there right away. Oh, not we. Me. You've got that toaster right. Steve. Besides, what could possibly happen to me at a ritzy spa? <laughs> Dee's regular room here. Listen, I really appreciate you filling in for her. Oh, well, I guess we both got lucky. <laughs> well, it's got the latest floating floor, uh, major quad sound system, perfect ventilation. Good luck. 
Thanks. Okay, everybody, we're gonna warm up a little bit first. You ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Perhaps a musical toast. Hmm. I wonder if Father Prestwick can sing. Well, Sergeant Clancy, well, come in. I checked the directory of welfare organizations. The Catholic Church was on it. Mm. Really? Now, Frank, I went to three other places first. They were either full or closed. Now, I know Steve is attached to it. Until we get a hearing scheduled, the judge said that she could stay here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Good class. Bye. Fingerprints. Don't they make a record when a baby is born? Footprints. Uh, but they're not on the computer. They'd have to check every hospital. And you have any idea how many maternity wards there are in Chicago alone? St. Michael's. Frank, yeah, I found the woman. Get over here right away, okay? Bring some help. <laughs> Whether he's armed, but he looked really tough.
father, darling. You and I are going to have a little talk. Steve definitely saw the woman. She was there just a few minutes ago. I, I don't get it. Neither do I. I'm telling you, I saw her. She was there. She was in a chair, and there were two guys hanging over her. It this looked is like... her. That's her. Stop her. Uh, miss? Yes? Excuse me. We have a case we think you might be able to help us with. We have your baby. I beg your pardon? It's okay. You're safe now. I'm sorry. I don't have a baby. Who are you people? Excuse me. I'm late. I am telling you that that's the woman from the park. I just saw her tied up. What is going on? Whatever it is, next time, do me a favor. Call the fire department. Well, at least I got a great workout and a complimentary sweatshirt. Steve, look. got the address of his apartment. <coughs> I probably shouldn't be showing you Chuck's apartment. Well, we wouldn't be asking if there weren't a lot at stake. Yeah, well, seeing as he hasn't been here in about a week and the rent was due yesterday. It's almost like it isn't his anyway. Right? <laughs> hey, not that he didn't ever use it. You wouldn't believe what went on up here. Well, I bet I would. Steve? Yeah? Look at these. Hey, that's her. Do you think that's the baby? It's got to be her. Do you recognize this woman? Sure, she's one of the regulars. Real polite, no uh, noise, if you know what I mean. Did she ever have a baby with her? <laughs> Honey, the last thing Chuck cared about was kids. <laughs> so what are you thinking, Frank? I'm thinking that that apartment is as phony as Chuck's name. How's that? Well, it's so sparsely furnished, it hardly looks as if anyone ever lived there. Well, she said he wasn't around much. Maybe he moved. Oh, but there's a toothbrush, a new tube of toothpaste, shaving gear in the bathroom. Now, I think he used that place so he could have an address for his job at the spa. And a place to entertain. A sideline? No. I bet you nickel he uses it for a cover. It's as phony as his job. I don't know. I just don't know. What's the problem? Marie, listen to this. Good evening, Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I just don't know. You don't know what? Well, it just sounds so predictable. You see, the bishop will be expecting something a little special from me. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I have been asked to propose a toast to the year this evening. I'm delighted to be here. Alaska! <laughs> Said he would like to take up the collection. <laughs> and then I proposed to many toast. And then the Bishop of New York said to keep busy. <laughs> oh, that is surefire material, yeah. Do you really think so? Do you really think so? You don't? Well, I, I, I'm just not sure it's me. <laughs> What's this? It's a baby. What's it doing here? She has no idea. Go on, pick her up. She'd love to be helped. Almost anybody. <clears throat> oh, perhaps another time. Oh, dear. I, I really have to get back to the archdiocese. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you are, Father. So what do you 
think about the speech that Frank wrote? It's terrific, huh? Uh-huh. Yes, well, I left it on your desk with a few notes for changes, but uh -huh, I think it's coming along. And here I thought it was finished. Oh, I, I, I think with a, um, a little touch-up here and there, I thought perhaps one other anecdote at the beginning and then just a little tightening at the end, it'll be fine. I'm just sorry I won't be here to go over it with you, but I've got to get back. Mm -hmm. I sure hope he sold out our table. Yeah, I had no idea the price would be this high. Is an angel. <laughs> oh, how is she? She's fine. I'll tell you one thing about her. She's not from around here. What do you mean? Well, when I washed her clothes, I looked at the labels as they're from a very expensive baby shop over in Oak Park. Look at that, Frank. Born yesterday. Yeah. You know, I'm sure someone at that shop could help us find the mother. Well, let's take this over there and find out. All those things are made to order. I know because my nephew Paul's wife got all their things there, practically bankrupted him. Mm. Nice work, Marie. Oh. Are you sure this is the right address? That's the address the girl at the baby store gave us. Yeah, let's go. You know, I don't know why this woman gave up her kid, but if she lives here, it's not because she couldn't afford to keep her. Yeah. Father, I'm so glad you found me. Is my baby all right? Oh, she's fine. She just needs her mother. You're really gonna have to tell us what's going on. I'm so sorry about what I did at the gym, but he was there, and I was afraid. I didn't know what to do. Can we go inside and talk? No, I can't. Not now. Um, um, Why don't we go inside? You're gonna freeze. No, no. You have to go. He'll be back any minute. I can't talk now. I'm sorry. We're not leaving until we get some answers. I'll phone you and arrange to pick up my little girl. Now, wait a minute. I, I'll tell you this much. I'm going to leave here, start a new life someplace. See, you've given me the courage to do that. That's all I can say now, please, Father. I'm in so much danger if anybody sees me talking to you. Laura, who was that? Oh, nobody, Mr. Phillips. A uh, priest collecting for some charity. He doesn't know anything about the kidnapping, does he? Because if he does, I'll have to notify the Bureau. We haven't told anyone except the police. Now you. Mrs. Phillips, can I get you some tea? OK, uh, I'll be in the kitchen if you need anything. If you wanted to stay that way, deliver the $2 million in negotiable securities we discussed to the park where we grabbed her, 3 o'clock today. Uh, look, I haven't got it yet. It, it takes time to raise that. Don't jerk me around. You've had plenty of time. You know the housekeeper deliver the money. She knows we mean business. o'clock today. They want Laura to bring the money. Why me? I, I can't. I can't. They figure they have nothing to lose. You've already seen them when they grabbed the baby. I don't know. Laura. I know you're frightened, and I know how terrible it was for you when they took Melissa. But you gotta help us. Please. We'll have men all around the park. You'll wear a wire so we can hear everything that's happening. We could be absolutely safe. Please, Lord. Let's 
going to be her. Father, darling. Father, I'm going to leave this house, but I need your help. I'll do whatever I can to help you, but you must tell me the truth. Father, I'm so scared. Will you bring my baby and meet me like before in the park? Three o'clock this afternoon? We'll be there. Thank you, Father, and bless you. Did you buy it? Of course. I'm really scared. Are you sure you'll be able to see him when they pull up? You're not going to believe this. He's disguised as a priest. The woman driving is dressed like a nun. I think he's got a gun. Yeah, yeah. The wire's going dead. Getting in a station wagon with the female suspect. The male suspect is in the front passenger seat holding the baby. Believed to be armed and dangerous, stand by. Now then, young lady, suppose you'll give us some answers. It's terrible. The man I married ended up being a criminal. He's a killer for hire. By the time I learned who he was and what he did, I, I was already pregnant and afraid. Oh, God, that's his van over there. Quick, please. He'll kill all of us. Move in, now. The guy running the operation said he'd never encountered such a classic criminal face. And he'd never seen such wheel work. He refused to believe that anybody who could drive like that is a nun. Thanks. You sure you don't want him for your scrapbook? I just can't believe that that woman was part of a kidnap gang. I mean, she just seems so sincere. And now she's very rich. Two million dollars worth. And the parents? Thrilled. I saw them. They couldn't love that kid more if they were the real parents. She's adopted? About three months ago. That woman came to work for them right after that as a housekeeper. But she was so great with the kid that they promoted her to nurse. Easy enough to just walk right out of the house with the baby. Mm -hmm. And report that it was taken at gunpoint. But why did she leave it with us in the church? I'll tell you what. When we catch her, I'll ask her. Oh, well. me steaming is the way she tricked us, the way she lied to us, and we went right along with it. <laughs> Steve, you have to laugh like that. It's very upsetting. Frank, this speech that you wrote is really very funny. The only problem with it is nobody is going to believe that Father Presswick wrote it. Yeah, that should be our biggest worry. The confounded nerve of her to look me straight in the eye and tell me Frank, that... Frank, you're a priest. You're in the business of helping people. If somebody comes to you and asks to be rescued, you're going to do it. Yeah, and some of them take advantage. I know it, and I accept it, but I don't like it. And she was so convincing. I know. She fooled me, too. And I've had a lot more experience with people like her than you have, Frank. It's just when she told me how much she loved that baby, the, the look in her eyes. 
Excuse me, I'm going to my niece's, so I'll say good night. And if you're going to attend that bishop's dinner, you'd better get a move on, too. Oh, thanks, Marie. And don't be late. When Father Prestwick phoned the last time, he sounded like he was about ready to bust a gasket. No disrespect intended, of course. Of course. That's it. It's got to be. Marie, I want you to take this to Father Prestwick down at the bishop's dinner. Come on, Steve. What? Wait. It's the ballroom at the Royce Hotel, and there's emergency money in the jelly jar for a cab. Cab? You let me know if you're here from her, Phil, okay? And don't tell her that I called. You just, just let me know if you hear from her. Got it? Yeah, thanks. You think she'd go to her mother's? She hates her mother. She might have gone to L.A. Anybody home? Sister, what are you doing? I don't think it's locked, Frank. I think it's just stuck. You forced the lock. I didn't force it, I just helped it. Uh -huh. Here, take a look at these pictures again. Am I right or am I right? Oh, no thanks. So, uh, we should consider the question of where she might have gone. And what might the answer be? Well, I think that she double-crossed her partners. If she intended to split that ransom with them, she would have never used us as a diversion. She would have just given them the money and returned the baby to its parents. I think she's gone to Duluth. Oh, Duluth. Don't you remember that day in the park when we first met her? She was asking all those questions about Duluth, the, the weather, the population, the bus service. That's right, Frank. That's got to be it. I think we should tell Sergeant Clancy immediately. Get the car. How far is Minnesota? These pictures, you and the baby, that we saw at Chuck's apartment, I remember that they were taken in the summer. And you've only been employed by this family for a short time, so that meant that you knew the baby even before they did. Because you're the child's real mother. That's right. She's mine. We knew you'd be back for her. And you had to get back quickly before they changed the security code on the alarm. Or before your boyfriend Charles caught up with you. I never wanted to put her up for adoption. It, it was Charles' idea. He talked me into it. But I don't care about him. I just want my baby. And enough money to set yourself up comfortably? I mean, that was the point of the kidnapping, wasn't it? This is the ransom money, isn't it? I don't expect you to understand. I had to do this. Laura, I'm sure that you heard of the biblical story about Solomon and the two women who claimed the same child. And he very wisely offered to cut that child in half to settle the dispute. But the true mother, she chose to give up her child rather than see it harmed. You can't get away with this, Laura. No matter where you go, they're going to find you. And you'll be put in prison. And what about your child then? If you really care about her, you'll let us take her back to where she'll be safe. But she's 
my baby. No, she's not your baby anymore. She belongs to the family that adopted her. Laura, they love her very much, and they want her back. I think you'll see that we're right. Stay away from Duluth. Duluth? Ah, oh, it's a private joke. But good advice. Wait a minute. Thank you. wasn't sure he could wait up much longer. Would you pour, Father? Yeah. Oh, very good and very, very expensive. What's the occasion? They gave it to me because I was a hit. They laughed six times and applauded at the end. The toast? You did it? Well, you see, my first husband, Mr. Sweeney, who was killed in the war, God rest his soul, he always took me to vaudeville every Saturday night. Oh. I know what to do with material. <laughs> so what happened to Father Presswick? Well, he was so nervous he couldn't talk. And I was sitting there holding it. So I just got up and let her rip. <laughs> she was an incredible success. I couldn't have done it better myself. If I'd been feeling up to it, of course. Well, that's very generous of you, Father. No, not at all. I mean, the bishop is happy. And if he's happy, well, who isn't? So how did you explain not making your own speech? Oh, I simply told them that using a layperson made it all the more appropriate. And besides, I'm still the writer. Oh, so they like the writing. So much so that the bishop requested some humorous material for the Rotary Club luncheon next Tuesday. No, oh, don't worry, Father. We have plenty of time to work on that. Oh, I'm so relieved. So, Father Presswick, how about a toast? Yes, of course. Here's to the, um, here's to the, um, Here's to the, um, um, here is to, uh, uh, 